and welcome to another episode of Cardio Metabolic Beat, brought to you by the Cardio Metabolic Health Congress. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Sarah Hallberg from Verda Health. Dr. Hallberg is a nationally and internationally recognized expert in the field of carbohydrate restriction for type 2 diabetes and part of the largest and longest trial to date in this field. Dr. Hallberg also was recently part of the 2021 CMHC Spring Meeting, where she discussed the evidence behind low carbohydrate diets in cardiometabolic health. Dr. Hallberg, thank you so much for being with us today. Let's get started. What is the evidence behind ketogenic low carb diets in reducing cardiometabolic risk? So I will tell you that there is a lot of evidence on low carbohydrate and very low carbohydrate or well-formulated ketogenic diets on cardiometabolic risk factors. Um, in fact, it's the most widely studied dietary intervention, especially in type two diabetes. And that was actually noted by the American Diabetes Association in their guidelines. Um, and so we look at a wide range of cardiometabolic risk factors. I think it's pretty well known by everyone at this point that um, carbohydrate restriction can improve and even reverse type 2 diabetes. Um, bring someone even who was on hundreds of units of insulin off of insulin and normal glycemia, um, which is exciting. But it's not just limited to the major improvements on diabetes. Um, it also is lipids. Um, inflammation is another significant cardiovascular risk marker that it has been shown with therapeutic carbohydrate restriction, not only shown clinically, but we understand the basic science of why a uh, very low carbohydrate or well-formulated ketogenic diet decreases inflammation, decreases uh, markers of fatty liver disease, um, the list goes on and on, decreased high blood pressure, but it's important to note it's not just glucose that improves. Dr. Holberg, in broader terms, what does the ketogenic diet, low-carb diets consist of, and how do we educate our patients so they don't think that low-carb or keto diets are all about butter, bacon, and eggs? Yes. And that is a big hurdle to overcome because that's the first thing people think of um, is they think of just a big pile of cheese and bacon. And, you know, first of all, let's go back to that first part of that question, and then we'll get to what that could look like for various people. But the first part of the question is exactly what is a low carbohydrate or a very low uh, carbohydrate diet? And this is a really important um, uh, fact um, that often gets muddled in the literature. People will just toss around the term low carbohydrate. And if you actually look at what they're eating, um, it's not low carbohydrate at all. So low carbohydrate would be anything under 126 total grams of carbohydrates a day, okay, or roughly um, uh, 20% of intake. Um, a very low carbohydrate diet would be 50 grams or less, um, or under 10% of total intake. And so those definitions are really important when we're especially evaluating the literature, um, but also in our communication with patients. And so what does a Carbo carbohydrate restricted diet look like in the real world. And that depends on your patient. I mean, that's the beauty of carbohydrate restriction is it can really take on any eating pattern. I mean, you're not going to give the same advice to a patient you have in front of you who's a vegetarian that you would to someone who enjoys to eat meat. Um, you know, getting to know the person personally, um, what are their schedules like? Um, are they traveling all the time for work? Do they stay at home? What are their preferences, especially what are their cultural preferences and family traditions? 
So again, coaching someone on carbohydrate restriction is all about substitution. It's not about changing the entire way that a person eats. So for example, if someone has a rice heavy diet, you know, teaching them about cauliflower rice or hemp used as rice. I actually think hemp rice is fantastic and people will find that it's really takes on the similar texture um, and, you know, taste, which is pretty bland if you think about it with rice. So we can really, um, take this dietary advice that can make huge an impact on metabolic disease. And we can really target it to the specific patient in front of us. Dr. Hallberg, for which cardiometabolic patients is a ketogenic diet more appropriate for? For example, is it more appropriate for those with obesity, type two diabetes? And additionally, who is not a good candidate for a low carb or ketogenic diet? Great. Well, on the first question, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> so I say the most appropriate patients for therapeutic carbohydrate restriction are people with metabolic disease. Okay. And that's, you know, obviously there's a spectrum of metabolic disease. So some people are just struggling with insulin resistance. Okay. They may not even have weight to lose. And then of course we can go to the other end of the spectrum, which is, you know, type two diabetes. Um, and those people respond absolutely, I mean, wonderfully to carbohydrate restriction. Again, it's just amazing to see someone get off hundreds of units of insulin um, and have normal glycemia, especially when all of their um, time since diagnosis, they were told that it was a chronic and progressive disease. And who is it not appropriate for? Well, I mean, that is a really short list. It's not appropriate for people who have um, hyperchylomicronemia, but by the time someone is an adult, um, they know if they have that. You know, that's something that maybe we would worry about in a child who was starting um, a well-formulated ketogenic diet for seizures, but that's something that doesn't hide by the time you get to adulthood. And so, you know, I've utilized therapeutic carbohydrate restriction in patients with organ transplants, um, actually getting them to an organ transplant and helping them lose weight. Um, that can be uh, another thing. Um, patients even who are contemplating bariatric surgery, it can be put in place um, before bariatric surgery. And so I would say, you know, again, most all of your patients are going to be appropriate um, for therapeutic carbohydrate restriction if they want to do it. And so that is a really important piece of who it's appropriate for. They need to want to be to do it. I mean, that's the case with any dietary intervention that we're recommending for patients. Patients need to have the ability to choose what type of dietary intervention they would like to follow. So it's important for providers um, in you know, all kinds of disciplines to be able to have a patient-centered discussion about the benefits of different types of dietary interventions. Thank you. And final question, how difficult is it to get people to want to treat their disease with diet change? And why is it so hard to make that change? And particularly how to get them to follow a low carb or ketogenic diet in the long term? Yeah, those are great questions and they really all boil down to adherence. So number one part of that question is how do you get someone to want to do it? And really, honestly, when you have someone with type 2 diabetes, um, especially someone with longer standing type 2 diabetes who's on insulin, you know, the idea of being able to get off medications, and if you can have that discussion with you patient, you might be surprised how many people would love to give this a go, because they thought again, that once they started insulin or other diabetes medications, they were going to be on them for the rest of their lives. So 
having that discussion, going back again to saying, you know, it's important that providers are educated so that they can educate their patients. And that's a big one. And then how do you get, why is it difficult? I think was the second part of the question. And, you know, lifestyle interventions are difficult. If they were easy, everyone would do it. And that brings me to the third part of your question, which is how do you get someone to stay on it? And it's support, support, support. You can hand someone a piece of paper and they can follow a carbohydrate restricted diet and that will work for a few percentage of patients. Um, But most people need support. Living in this high carbohydrate world we have, being able to help support people through, you know, holidays, family events, other trying things, COVID, for example, incredibly important. So, you know, the goal is to surround them with help. It's great to be able to communicate via via technology with patients so that you can really have a high touch situation. Um, You know, group meetings can be great um, or high touch, you know, with a provider in the clinic. So really important that people are supported. Thank you so much, Dr. Hallberg, for your time and expertise. Absolutely. So glad to be here. And thank you to all of you for listening. If you have questions or if you have any feedback on topics you would like to discuss in future episodes, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at info at cardiometabolichealth.org. Thank you again. And until next time.